friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be back. And in today's video, I have five Dollar Tree hearth and hand dupes for you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay friends, let's kick this thing off with this first DIY that's so easy you could probably do this in your sleep. All I did was take a 14 inch hoop wreath from Dollar Tree or ring, whatever you like to call it. And then I also had this eucalyptus from Dollar General. It was $3 a bundle, I believe. And all I had was just one bundle and maybe like one piece from a different bundle. So all I did was clip off that greenery. And then instead of gluing this, I decided to try to use this wire from Dollar Tree. Now, it's not the easiest to work with. I found the easiest way to do it was to lay down your piece, wrap the bottom of the stem, and then as you're getting to the end of that stem, then add another piece and start wrapping that piece. Um, and it worked out fine for me. I wish I had more greenery, but this was all that I had um, on hand at the moment. So it's okay. I made it at work no big deal but once I got the first side done then I did the exact same thing to the second side and you want to make sure that you start at the top and work your way down or else your wire will not wrap right <laughs> and then for the middle I just took two pieces that I had glued them together going in opposite directions and then glued that right down into the middle to make the wreath look more cohesive now in the original wreath it did not have a bow but I just felt like mine was missing something so I did add this little bow from Dollar Tree and I simply just made a finger bow if you need a tutorial I'll leave that in the cards in the right hand corner and then I just glued that down down with some hot glue and literally you guys it was that easy it only cost me $4.25 so let me know down in the comments what you think of my version Now this was another super simple project. This one took a little bit of patience as well. So to start off, I took one of these wood rounds from Dollar Tree and then I just kind of free handed a handle out of it. Next, I took a very sharp utility knife and I, this is a box cutter utility knife, whatever you want to call it. And I started by cutting the front or scoring it, if you will, right along where I marked it. And then eventually I could see through the back where I was cutting. So I just flipped it around and followed that line around. And then the corners is the trickiest part, which it really wasn't that bad, but all in all, that was the trickiest part of this. Um, so the corners, you just kind of want to um, almost chop it. That way you can kind of see through the back where you are cutting. And then through the back, you can kind of work that through. Once you're done, then you're just going to pop it through. It sounds and looks a lot harder than it is. This is super cheap wood. If I had thicker wood, I'd be using a jigsaw or something of that nature. But because this wood is so thin, I did just go ahead and use my knife. And then once that was cut out, then I sanded down the edges and I filled in those holes with my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. Now this next part, you guys, I figured that this would not work, but you never know unless you try. Um, I think the only reason this didn't work is because this wood from Dollar Tree is so thin that it just seeps right through it if you're using something like I'm using. So all I did was tape it off and then sand down the excess lightweight spackling. And then I took my two stains of choice stains of choice mix those up really well before using them and then I started with my darker color which was Kona 
and I just kind of tested it on a popsicle stick to make sure that I liked those colors and then when I was satisfied I went in with the darker color first. Now looking back I probably should have just stained this all the lighter color and then went in with the darker color and I do not think that it would have bled that way. So definitely try that first before you try to painter's tape stain on thin wood. <laughs> It sounds funny now that I'm saying it, like, girl, why did you even try that? But you live and you learn, right? Anyway, once I was done with that little side with the darker stain, then I went in with my lighter stain and just stained that part. I also took these half circle wood beads and I stained those as well with the lighter One stain. I'll have to get later. that um, name of the stain for you and I will leave it in the description box. Um, but I also stained that and then I went in one more time with the darker stain just to make sure that I had a good contrast. Now once that was finally dry the very next day, then I went in with some painter's tape and I just created a stripe down that part. That way it could cover up the imperfections, which I actually really didn't mind the way that it seeped that way, but I did just want to make this look better. So I just put a, a white line down the middle so you couldn't tell. Now once again, this is cheap wood, so that little tiny edge did kind of break on me a little bit. So I just reinforced that with a piece of popsicle stick, and then I added my feet, which I wish I wouldn't have done. It was lopsided, or I wish I would have just did it with three, but hey, no big deal. I still absolutely love the way that it turned out, and I know you'll let me know down in the comments what you think as well. Okay friends, I could not wait to make this. Now unfortunately, mine didn't come out the exact same shape, which is totally fine. Um, when I do dupes or anything like that, I don't try to go for perfection. I just try to go as close as I possibly can, and I think I did a pretty good job. I know you guys will let me know. But I start off with five of these frames from Dollar Tree. They are the black, I don't know what size they are, but they have the jute hanging with the little clips for pictures. Um, so I just open all of those up, take the backing and the jute out, and then I take out the um, backing holders, the little metal pieces with my needle nose pliers. Now, had I did this over again, I would have covered this part with wood. So do as I say, not as I do. Use popsicle sticks stir sticks, a piece of wood from Dollar Tree, anything other than gluing two of the backs together and putting that down and calling it a day. Um, I thought it would work. I thought that these were thick enough, which in the end they were, but I just wish that they were a little more, a little more sturdier. So to reinforce this a little bit all I did was take a stir stick I cut the end off so that it would fit and then I just adjusted it in the middle to give it a little bit of support next I just go around the edges once again re reinforcing that with some hot glue and now we're going to move on to the assembly part I just take another frame and I glue down the side of it and then glue it down to the side repeating that on the second side I then take a square dowel from my stash. You can find the square dowels that I use in my Amazon store linked in the description box below. But I just hold that up to the edges and mark it and then I go in with my mini miter saw and I cut that. I get lots and lots of questions about my mini miter saw. That too is also linked in my Amazon store so you can check that out. But I just cut that down and then put that down on either side for support and then I repeat that step for the top part to glue that together. I also want to mention 
these frames from Dollar Tree, I don't know if they put wax on them. I, I don't know what is on these frames, but I do recommend using a more heavy glue like super glue, um, Anything heavier than hot glue, I definitely recommend to use that is a quick hold, but that um, is going to last because if, as you can see here, some of the parts on my project was just coming right up and I could tell that these frames were like waxy almost. So anyway, I did just want to mention that it all worked out in the end because I did end up going in with some super glue. Um, but all in all, no big deal. I did just want to mention that once I had those pieces cut, then obviously I glue them down with some hot glue and then I attach the top pieces. Now, of course, this is out of frame. You're going to have to bear with me. I'm getting used to filming again in my shed, but I did just take a smaller dowel. I cut that down to size and I glued that down on each either side of it just to have something to glue my frame to and then I glued that down and I forgot to glue the top so we're gonna do that here in a minute but next I just take these skewers from Dollar Tree they are the longer thicker skewers so if you pick up a pack just know um, if it's not the real long ones that are thicker than regular skewer skewers um, then those are not the ones that I used I don't know if the skinny ones will work they might you can try it but anyway I just measure these down or I measure these I cut them down to size and then I glue them down two on the shorter sides and then three on the longer sides Here is where I realized that I never glued the top of it. So all I did was just run a bead of hot glue down the middle and then I took one of those skewers as well, measured it quickly and then I put that down into the hot glue. That way it kind of finished it and you couldn't see that ugly hot glue seam if you will. And then I just continued to cut and glue down my side pieces. Next, I go in with another piece, I measure that down, and I glue those down for the cross pieces going all the way around. Once I was done with that, then I repeated those steps for my roof pieces. And here is where I'm about to show you that the hot glue was just not cooperating with me. And I like to leave these in because it's okay to make mistakes, you guys. It's okay to get frustrated with your project and want to literally throw the entire thing across the room. This is where I was at with this project. I promise you, I was texting my friend saying, girl, I'm about to throw this entire thing across the room. And... I just had to bring it back to center, push the negative thoughts out, and just put one foot in front of the other and say, you know what, I've come this far, I am not going to give up now. So all I did was to just take some hot glue, or take some um, super glue, and I just went across all the seams, all the pieces that were glued, and I glued those together. Last but not least, I spray painted it black and look how amazing it turned out through all the trials and tribulations. We did it, you guys. I absolutely love it so much. Even though it gave me a headache, it was totally worth the hassle. As always, don't forget to let me know down in the comments what you think of this project and which project at the end is your favorite.
Okay, friends, moving on to the second to last project. Now, this one is also super simple. All I did was take two bunches of ferns from Dollar Tree. I took the wire wreaths or hoops, whatever you want to call them. I ended up spray painting two of them because I was going to make two wreaths, but I ultimately just decided to do the bigger one. So I'm just showing you here that you can use hot glue. It's totally possible. It just takes a little bit more time and patience. So all I did was kind of separate all of the picks from the bunch. I cut those off and then I just started by gluing them down in one direction, kind of layering them if you will. And then I always like to do a few and then start on the other side. That way I can make sure that it's nice and even. And then you're gonna see my trick here in the middle to join these together. So once I got to the middle, all I did was take a piece on the end I took the next branch off of it, if you will, and kind of pushed it into a V, and then I pushed the branch down going the opposite way. That way, I could cut off the excess wire and then glue it down into the middle, and it just kind of gives it that more natural finished look and literally you guys that was it for this project i cannot believe they are actually charging 15 dollars for that when you can make it in about 10 minutes and only spend just a couple dollars so let me know if i got pretty close with this one i wasn't too sure with the first wreath um, I thought the hearth and hand was a little fuller but this one i feel that i got on point Okay, friends, last but not least project. This is probably one of my favorites. Um, I can never decide. But again, this one came with a few hiccups. No big deal. So I take these two pieces of wood from Dollar Tree and I start off by taking my square and just kind of doing like a rooftop, if you will. And then I realized that the first one that I marked was gonna be a little bit too long. So I kind of measure the side of the piece because I'm also going to use this wood for the entire box, the bottom and the sides. So I measured that down and then cut my pieces. And you're going to see here in a minute after I sanded down the edges really good because on the original caddy, the edges are nice and rounded. So I wanted to get mine as close as possible. But you're going to see here in a minute, this was not cut right. I should have made my pitches a lot taller, and I didn't, so we just have to improvise. So <laughs> that was the moment where I'm like, oh god, this ain't going to work. This is way too big. But here I am, being me, not having time to fix it. So I'm like, okay, we're going to make this work, girl. Like, we're going to make this work. Watch me. I waste the glue. I put the side up. And you can see me like, wait a minute. What is going on here? Something is not right. I then again proceed to put it together. And then my OCD is like, nope, ain't happening. You can see I also grabbed the paper towel and still tried to put the side up. Yeah, no. It was just not, it did not look right. So what I did was wipe off the um, wood glue and then I took one of those pieces marked right down the middle and then I cut that down the middle and I also just trimmed down the sides of my house. Yeah, yeah, I called it a house, I know. It's the side of the caddy. I know somebody will come in the comments, you call it a house, it's a caddy. <laughs> anyway, y'all, so 
I cut down the side of the caddy and then once again we're going to wood glue. I had some trouble getting it out so all I did was take the excess of one of those skewers we used earlier and I just kind of put the hot yeah the hot glue the wood glue all the way around the edges and if you guys don't have this gorilla wood glue that's the heavy duty definitely get you some i'm not sure what is in it that makes it better you have a lot more play time with moving your pieces and not only that but this wood glue is so thick that your pieces stick together with no problem so I just take my wood glue and I glue all of my pieces to my box together and then I let that dry. Next, I take this round dowel that I believe I got from Walmart a while back for like a dollar. I just measure that for the top and then cut that down with my miter shears. And then I sanded all the way around, just removing the any excess wood glue that I could see. I then just stirred up my stain and I stained my dowel and then set that aside. Now, because stain is oil-based, you definitely want to let it air dry, let it sit, cure, whatever you'd like to call it before you use your project or you use that piece because it will get all over your fingers and it just makes a big mess. So I like to stain it, wipe off the excess, and then if it's a nice day, set it outside, um, something like that while I'm working on the rest of my project. Now for the sides of this, um, the one by Joanna Gaines was like raised. So the easiest way I found to do that was take these really tiny wooden dowels that I got in a pack I believe from Walmart as well and I just kind of eyeballed it um, there was no particular size I just kind of left a little bit of room at the edge at the ends and then I took another piece and kind of measured that to make a rectangle once all of my pieces were cut and I sanded them down smooth then I went in and I glued my pieces together before I glued it to my box. That way I could make sure that it was nice and straight um, before I glue it and I have to move it around and it's a big old mess. So I don't know. Hindsight is 2020. If I was doing this again, I would probably have just glued it right onto the box but of course my name's Melissa and things become more popular <laughs> things become more complicated than they need to be sometimes but that's okay no big deal um once that was dry then I painted some more wood glue on the back of it glued that down to my piece and set some heavy uh bottles on top of it so that it would glue down nicely once that was complete drying and I made sure that that decorative piece didn't go anywhere, I then went in with my Moss Waverly chalk paint and I gave that a really nice coat. Now because Waverly chalk paint, especially after it's been sitting for a while, is pretty thick, I only had to do one coat, but you might need to do two. As you can see, I place the dowel rod in between the top pieces and then to screw this together. Now, I did not end up screwing it together because I didn't like the way that it looked, but I was just showing you that you have to um, drill out the hole first and then screw it together if that's what you want to do. But again, I liked mine without it. And then literally, you guys, that was it. Look how gorgeous this turned out. Mine was so easy to make. Even though it came with some hiccups, once again, I was determined to put this together and make a gorgeous project. So if you just put your mind to something, you can do anything. Our minds are such powerful tools and a lot of times we just don't use them in the right way. So guys, with all that being said, don't forget to stop, like, comment on this video, share, and subscribe. And I would also like to thank Nancy and Judy for the craft supplies. And if you enjoy my work and would like to support my channel and get a shout out in my next video, 
Check the link in the description box below. And again, I would like to thank Nancy and Judy for the support. So with all that being said, my sweet friends, thank you so, so much for the support. Thank you for sticking around with me through thick and thin. I appreciate you guys more than you know. This pregnancy and my life is literally insane, but I wouldn't be where I'm at without you guys today. Don't forget to vote on your favorite project down in the comments below. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. If you guys want ketone info on my drink for weight loss, um, my Facebook link is in the description box below. Send me a friend request and a message. And with all that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.